So this is Apple's new 2022 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And when looking at this year's iPad Pro versus last year's, nothing has really changed at least to the physical outside body of the iPad Pro. The performance though has been taken to a whole new level and with the addition of Apple's M2 silicon chip, the potential of the iPad Pro lineup is never ending in what you can do using this fantastic new tablet experience with the 2022 iPad Pro. Now, very quickly, let's go ahead and take care of the looks, the aesthetic of this year's iPad Pro. And externally, things are certainly very familiar when it comes to comparing uh, this year's iPad Pro to last year's. We still have the squared off chassis, which is that classic iPad Pro looking design. We still have the absolutely stunning liquid Retina XDR display, and we also still have the same Thunderbolt and USB-C connection at the bottom for charging and data transfer. Now to the rear, we still have the incredible dual camera array, allowing you to shoot 4K60 video and amazing 12 megapixel photos as well. But something exclusive to this year's iPad Pro with Apple's M2 chip is the capability not only to shoot videos in ProRes and ProRes RAW, but also to edit and render those videos straight through the iPad Pro. So essentially you can now shoot and edit in ProRes and ProRes RAW on the iPad directly, but if you wanted to take ProRes or ProRes RAW video from let's say your iPhone 13 Pro Max or 14 Pro Max, you can do that now and edit everything from your iPad instead of having to go to a desktop or laptop experience. So those are some of the new camera related features coming from this year's iPad Pro specifically, and literally nothing has changed physically in regards to, let's say the sensors, the lenses, or anything like that. But actually all of these new features that we just discussed are capable now through new software taking advantage of Apple's M2 silicon chip capabilities that are now in this year's iPad Pro. So moving on to the rest of the iPad Pro experience, and obviously since we are dealing with a purely non-aesthetic performance-based improvement with Apple's M2 chip, the significant highlights will be a much faster, smoother, and more efficient user experience on this year's iPad Pro. Now, personally, I saw that when I was editing video content specifically, not only was the rendering and exporting process a lot faster, I also noticed that when editing 4K60 video, uh, whether that was in HDR, Apple ProRes, or ProRes RAW, I could actually scrub and pause and play the content instantaneously without any hiccups whatsoever. So no lags, no stutters or anything like that. I also saw that when you were pairing this new iPad with iOS 16.1, you'll experience a lot of the machine learning based features are a lot faster with the new M2 chip. So for the iOS 16.1 specific features uh, that take advantage of the M2 chip, uh, one of those is live text and it's a lot faster and more efficient but also when using the latest live text video feature, you can capture and use the live text instantaneously, especially when it comes to the ability to use quick actions, which is an awesome feature baked into live text. Now, when you are multitasking specifically, you'll notice that switching between apps, dragging, dropping, even of the biggest media files and manipulating the multitasking experience is not only a whole lot faster, but in my personal opinion, it's just a lot smoother than what I was experiencing on my M1 specific iPad Pro from last year. Now, in addition to that, if you have had the opportunity to use Stage Manager, you'll notice that specific multitasking feature is so much faster and smoother than on Apple's M1 chip because you just have a lot more bandwidth to work with with this new M2 chip in this year's iPad Pro. Now, one of those uh, kind of experiences that I had where I just had a lot more bandwidth to work with was when I attached my M2 iPad Pro to an external monitor. And essentially, I just had so much bandwidth, I could run Stage Manager, all of my apps on that external display and not have any hiccups whatsoever. So I'd say in regards to this new M2 chip, it not only makes that multitasking experience a lot faster, a lot more efficient and just smoother, it also helps expand my workspace when I want to hook up my iPad to an external monitor. Now, one of the last new features, more so to do with the Apple Pencil experience on this year's iPad Pro is the Apple Pencil Hover feature. Now, Apple Pencil Hover, specific to the M2 iPad Pro, provides a new, almost three-dimensional uh, type experience for users to interact with their screen. 
Now your pencil can be detected up to 12 millimeters above the display, allowing users to see a preview of their mark before they make it. More specifically, app developers are developing their apps around this new feature to include, include added app functionality for their specific apps. So in the near future, you'll start to see a lot of new features within apps that app developers are working on, and you'll actually be able to expand on the Apple uh, Pencil Hover feature over what it already does in, let's say, apps like Notes um, that Apple specifically has made for themselves. Okay, so obviously we are seeing a huge performance boost when it comes to this year's iPad Pro with Apple bringing one of their fastest Apple Silicon chips to the iPad Pro experience here in 2022. Now, as a result, you can go anywhere from document creation and editing tools to pro video shooting and editing experiences on this new iPad Pro. And not only will things be a lot faster and more efficient, saving you time and energy on your projects, but you'll also come out with all of those experiences with the same 10 hour battery life as the previous generation M1 chip iPad Pro, which has a 15% slower CPU and a 35% slower performing GPU. So I guess the big question is, should you buy it? That's always the question every year. And I have to say that the prices are the same. The performance is a lot higher and the M2 chip unlocks a lot more machine learning based capabilities that we've never seen before on an iPad. So honestly, this would be an absolute steal of a buy if you were a first time iPad Pro buyer and wanted a more portable yet still fast user experience on the iPad Pro setup. So guys, that was this year's new iPad Pro experience and everything you need to know. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, yay, nay on this year's iPad Pro experience here in 2022 from Apple. For me, it's a yay just because there's so much potential, but if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to get subscribed and I'll catch you all in the next video.